we are now joined by UFC women's flyweight Shauna Dobson. Our first question goes to Gabriel Gonzalez with Kate Side Press. Hey, Shauna. This is your first fight of the pandemic. What's it like going into this one as you've heard so many people talk about their experiences with the quarantine, the testing, et cetera? Um, it's been kind of weird, but I really like what the UFC is doing. They're making sure that, you know, with the protocol, everybody's safe and, um, you know, everyone, is, if, if anyone was to test positive, that, that they would find out right away. Uh, I didn't like that. Uh, COVID test that I had to take at home, uh, but I understand it was necessary, so it's all good. So far, have you only done the throat swab or have you had to do the nasal test? Yeah, the one at home was the nasal test. Uh, from what I understand, it wasn't as bad as the first nasal test that they was doing with the long, the really long Q-tip, but the Q-tip was like this big. It was disgusting, sticking out my nose. It felt felt very violated, but I appreciate the safety. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, you know what? All right, so you talk about it outside of the tests. Is anything different from what you expected? Because obviously, you know, you kind of go into it, oh, I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to have to deal with this and that during fight week since it's different. Has anything surprised you about the reality of what it's been? Um, I haven't been really surprised. My coach, uh, Sean Madden, he's been out to a bunch of these fights so far, the, the, the quarantine UFC fights. So he kind of hit me to the game and let me know, you know, what it's going to be like, the whole, the, the weirdness about it. But uh, hasn't been much of a surprise. It's, it's been a great, uh, tight, tight protocol, which I appreciate. I didn't want to come here with COVID or bring COVID back. Uh, so I'm happy about that. To shift gears to Maria, what does she bring to the table that makes her a dangerous opponent? Oh man, she's young, you know, she's excited. Uh, you know, she's coming off a, a great win, an impressive win. Um, so, you know, I, ha I have to give credit to my opponents as always. And final question to address the elephant in the room. You're, uh, you know, you're in a bit of a rough patch. Do you feel like you're fighting for your UFC career in this one? Man, you know, I, I have a different mindset than, than most people. You know, I, I look forward I look forward, I look to the future, I look at the present right now, and, you know, I'm with a great team, I'm with Elevation Fight Team, I'm with a great set of coaches, so I just feel confident, I don't, I'm not even thinking about that, I don't think that that's going to even be an issue uh, come Saturday night. Thank you, Shauna. Sure. Our next question is from Gabriel Pengelangan with Dojo Drifter. Hey, Shauna, so after three fights in the UFC, what are, you know, some of the biggest lessons and takeaways that you have? Man, I think that the biggest lesson, you know, after, after fighting in the UFC is just train your mental game. You know, it's, uh, it's very important uh, that you guys come in, that fighters come in mentally prepared as, as well as physically prepared. It can't just be 100% physical as far as preparation. You know, be aware of... Be aware of the feelings that you're going to feel, you know, leading up to the fight, fight week, the fight night. Be aware of those feelings, embrace them. And I think that's that's really what sets uh, this Saturday apart. So do you think you've been able to address those mental preparations ahead of this fight better than yeah. in previous fights? Sorry. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been working with my coaches a lot. Uh, I, I also... I'm doing my master's program right now to be a counselor. So, you know, I, I strongly believe that your mind is, you know, it's very powerful and it's, it's a muscle that needs to be worked just like our bodies. So, yeah, we've been working that a lot. So tell me about that, that master's. How long has that been going on and what is the end goal there? Man, too long. Um, <laughs> it's been a couple of years, but I'm, I've finished in November and uh, I would like to work with pro professional athletes. I feel like uh, with pro athletes, this is something that we don't talk about. We don't talk about our feelings or our emotions. Um, and I feel like I would like to help pro athletes open up about those things. Cause you know, we, we do some of the craziest stuff in the world, you know? And I feel like we need to talk about how it mentally pushes us. That sounds awesome, man. I actually noticed uh, on your chest a tattoo, one love, one heart. 
when yeah. destiny can you tell me a little bit about the backstory of that tattoo yeah um so i'm jamaican my parents are were born and raised in kingston jamaica so you know that's uh one love one people is a great is a big motto that the Jamaica people live by. And then, uh, of course, you know about the Bob Marley quote, you know, Bob Marley, Jamaica, he's a, a great symbol of, of that country. Uh, so, you know, I definitely, uh, I have, I have connection with, with my roots. All right. Well, thank you so much. And the best of luck this weekend. Thanks. Our next question is from Rodney James Edgar with MMAsoldier.net. Hey, first of all, is it Shanna or Shana? Because I always thought it was Shana. Everyone's calling me Shanna. Thank you for asking. It's Shauna. Yeah, I, am I hearing it wrong? It's Shauna. That's what they're saying. Okay, right? okay yeah, perfect. Shana, but thank you for Good. asking. I appreciate that. But I answer yeah, to all 26 varied uh, pronunciations of my name. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's really not even that difficult to think about. Um, so first of all, congratulations on, on the Masters. I actually am, uh, I'm just finishing mine up right now. In, uh, in journalism, so I know it, it is a tough journey. It's one of the toughest things I've ever done in my life. So hang in there and uh, you know, let us know uh, how that turns out, okay? Sure. Thanks. What is your, what's your bachelor's in? Was it uh, also- Family counseling? studies. Okay, so that's yeah. a smooth transition into that. Yeah. Um, you talked about, uh, you really piqued my interest earlier when you were talking about the mental aspect of preparation, because if you look at the top the best of the best fighters like john jones gsp they are very very big proponents of that mental preparation mm -hmm. and and i know uh you know from experience that a fight camp is very very stressful and mm -hmm. adding a global pandemic on top of that is just so much worse can you just talk a little bit about that uh, how the added stressors make it harder yeah i feel like um with the pandemic and, and whatnot it really threw a curveball in a lot of for a lot of fighters. You know, we we didn't have access to our gyms, to our coaches, to our training partners. But I think that you know, just staying calm and and make and planning, planning really helped. You know, um, plan with your. What we did was we planned with our teammates, like you know, where we're going to train, when are we going to train, how many people, how are we going to make sure that we're safe about it. And uh, I think you know, w uh, our sport is so resilient. We've just made adjustments. Great. Um, you uh, earlier you you mentioned Bob Marley and you said something about a Bob Marley quote, but you never actually told us the quote. So do you have a good inspirational Bob Marley quote you'd like to share? I know there's many of them. Um, I don't remember the exact words, but I remember like an interview that he did where he was talking about what what to him it, what is wealth to him and what are riches. And mm -hmm. you know, he was saying like not materialistic things like he's saying like um, like people that you have like great people around you and having great energy and, and accomplishments. Those are that's being wealthy like that's that's having riches. That's what he considered riches. So, yeah, I, I really vibe with that. Absolutely. I, I love that. I subscribe to that philosophy as well. Uh, last thing, just bonus question. You said your family's from Kingston. Um, I, I've been in Jamaica, a lovely place. Have you, uh, have you ever tried any of that fantastic Guinness that they only make in uh, Jamaica? Fantastic what? Guinness. You know they have a Guinness brewery in really? Jamaica. The, it's the only one outside of Ireland, as far as I know. And oh, they, wow. You can only get it in Jamaica. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to hit that up. I, I plan <laughs> on going back to Jamaica within the next couple of years, you know, after COVID slows down. So, yeah, I'm definitely... I love me a good beer, so I'm gonna have to hit that up. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, and uh, hey, we look forward to your fight. Uh, I know it's gonna be a great one, so best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Our last question is from Gavin Porter with UFC.com. That's it. So oh. uh, I just wanted to ask, why is this gonna be the best version of you that we've seen so far? We've seen the tough version, and then we saw the last two fights. Why is this version on Saturday gonna be the best option we've seen? Um, I think. I, I got to give credit to the training that I've put in um, and where I've been for the last six months. Uh, I feel like my team has spoken for, you know, the results have spoken for itself. Um, and just, you know, the people that I surround myself with, the level of competition that I'm training with, my training partners, you know, it's stacked in there. Every 
every Tuesday, every Friday when we're in there getting it and, and we're, we're pushing each other and we're sparring, we're sparring hard. You know, I've already seen, there's nothing that I haven't seen yet. You know what I mean? I've, I've already been, I feel fully prepared. Yeah, and when you think about this fight on Saturday and you envision it, what does it look like for you? What do you envision your style matching up with her style? What does it look like? Um, I think it's going to be fun. I feel like uh, Mariah, you know, she's she's a great striker. She's a great all-around fighter. And I feel like, you know, I have that I have that experience and I have, you know, I've been in there for wars. I've been in there for technical matches, you know what I mean? So I feel like and no matter where the fight goes, you know, uh, we're both going to be prepared to put on a great show for the, for the audience. And what does a statement win for you look like to get that fight for that finally, that UFC mm -hmm. dub that you want so bad? What does a statement win look like for you? Man, um, you know, I know I have power. So, you know, obviously everyone says they're going out there looking for a knockout. I know I have power. Uh, I believe that knockouts shouldn't be forced. They're not forced. So whatever happens, happens. But, you know, I know we're going to be victorious. Perfect. Thank you. You're good, Chad. Much good, much good.